Howdy, be Flip Bart here, and welcome. All right, as their map there suggests, we're going to talk about maps and the anatomy of maps in this issue of basic training. All right, so so far what we've been doing here is just kind of creating a shooter, a first-person shooter. And what we have is we can actually shoot. We have a sniper mode. We shoot our guy, he does a hit reaction, hit him four times, he dies. But if they're close enough, when we shoot him, of course, when we shoot them, they will actually turn towards us. Like, hey, stop that shit. Hey, hey. But if they're close enough, whenever we actually shoot them, they get aggravated and they come towards us. Now, they don't attack yet, but that's, you know, coming soon, I promise. And we can kill them, they do a death animation. Then after a few seconds, they go away. So, yeah, that's that. Okay, so let's get into the whole map situation. This is level one. So I'm gonna create a new level and let's talk about the basics of maps here. To create one, we select file and then new level. We have some choices here and I'm gonna go through from right to left because, you know, well, that's just what I'm going to do. Uh, empty level is just that. It is empty. There is nothing here. It is a vacuum. There is not a bit of light. Nothing. Why do you need that? Well, if you want to create your own skybox, your own light source, your own everything from the ground up, this is your best option. Start from, from there. The next one is VR Basic. And I use this one a lot for my test maps because you've got this nice little area to start off with and you've got well let's go ahead and the first thing you need to do is make sure you're setting it up for whatever game mode you're using for this case we're doing first person game mode and if I hit play see we have a ball we have some rather lightweight objects that we can move and manipulate in the world by knocking them over or things like that we can shoot them if we want to so you know, a good place to practice um, doing things like the basics of your AI movement or just testing things. This is a great little test map. So let's move on to the other and final type here, and that is going to be default. And I'm not saving anything on that one. And this is going to be the most commonly used for people to actually create a level fast because you already have a skybox with sun, clouds, and the clouds move. It's a great start. And again, we'll come over here and set our game mode to first person game mode. So now when we hit play, we um, have a platform. We have the sky, clouds, and we just have the basics to get started with. And that's all we need. And in this right here, what I encourage everybody to do whenever you, okay, this is the map that I'm going to create, is first off, I get rid of that. I get rid of that because it's not necessary just yet. These guys, they're fine where they are, but just out of my OCD, I'm just going to lower them down a little bit just to get them out of sight. So, the next thing will be to go ahead and create a main folder, which is going to be map stuff. You can create one that's called whatever you like, but I'm just going to use this to store all of my defaults for the map and go from there and I'm gonna go ahead and save all and we're going to make this to level underscore zero two so now how do we get a place to walk on because now we have no floor we have no ground we have nothing there's multiple ways you can go about this you can uh, look at it in a way that a lot of developers choose to use um, train objects. And what I mean by train objects, um, I don't know if I've actually got anything in here. You know, like, um, no, I'm not gonna have anything that's gonna be suitable for, for ground terrains. But essentially you can think of it as a series of terrain geometries. And in this case, I'm gonna drop in 
a little platform for us to stand on, which is going to be like so. And if you think about it, it's just an individual mesh that's put into your map. And then, okay, well, you want some other terrain, so you'll put another one in over here, another one in over here, different shapes. You're placing objects that are semi-flat terrain pieces into your map so that you can have... Um, various different locations you can actually travel to. Pros and cons, well on the con side you really are limited by the imagination of the person actually creating those terrain pieces and their cookie cutter pieces and you can resize them and you reshape them and and so forth but if you don't do it correctly you kinda of screw up your your materials as they, as they apply. Some of the pros, if your base terrain like your streets or um, basic areas are set up with a geometry like this once you apply the material to it it looks good but what you can also do is let's go ahead and I'm going to copy this one and I'm gonna lower it down why would you lower it down well let's just say that you wanted to add in a tunnel or you wanted to add in um, a section to where you have normal flat ground but you want to be able to enter into the the lower areas like a, a manhole cover or something of that nature and let's actually let's use it as a cylinder here and I'm gonna go ahead and make some changes to my cylinder um, let's make it 20 sides and the outer radius is gonna be 150 let's make it a little smaller and we can now change our Z height. Our floor is actually 10 deep, so we can do this 12 deep. And let's zero this out and lower it down just a little bit and change it from additive to subtractive. And now we've just created a hole in our terrain that we can use as a method to get from one level to the next. There we go. So that's some of the pluses and that, that could be a hole in the side of a mountain you could just carve into it and create your own cave system by doing that you know just the same as we applied that in there we can take the same cylinder brush control C control V and I'm gonna change it back to additive but now I'm gonna make it hollow Alright, well I didn't like that. So I'm going to go back and I'll create another one. And it was 20 sides outside radius of 100. What was it? Um, yeah, out of radius of 100. And let's go ahead and lower it back down. Change it to hollow. And the inner radius, let's change it to 100. Let's actually change it to 80 and the outside radius to 100. So you can stick that in your, your hole in the ground if you wanted. And I guess the best way to do it is to copy your location. It's 193.75. This is, well, let's just change this one to 200 and 375 this one will be 200 and 275 so we're well it didn't like that but you get the idea you can change the z height here to 200 so you create your manhole cover or your manhole system you go in here and you still have the same thing applied here but you can put a little lip on there and you can now fall through and you can set it up however you want to you put an opening on one side create a tunnel system sewer system things like that so that's that's one way you can go about creating your terrain is creating terrain brushes so that you could actually make the terrain the way you want to the next major method of creating a map is what a lot of people also will do is you come over here to landscape and now when you first click on it you can see that you have some sizing here 
normally it's going to default to on a new project 8 and 8 here and if you look it's a pretty decent sized world but if we want to change the size of it we'll look at the number of components I'm going to change that to 1 by 1 and now you look this is a single component all right and I'm going to create some and delete some and, and back and forth so you can see what that actually looks like so let's create that and the next thing I want to do is go back here to placement mode and I'm going to lower the elevation down to zero so now we come in here and play and you can see we have our terrain this is the size of a one component by one component and if you break it down you could count it out to that's 100, 200, 300, 400 and so on but if you look at the actual dimensions here um, on your landscape it's like one by one I think is 6300 if I'm not mistaken but say you don't like it you can grab your landscape and your gizmo and delete them and go back in here and like okay well let's try it again and overall resolution is 64 tiles by 64 so it's 6400 by 6400 in your size here if your overall resolution is kept this way on 64 by 64 it's going to maintain a decent aspect ratio so now whenever you change this way it's going to change your forward and backwards or your north and south you think about this way is east and west so if you want your map to be longer than it is wide you got two by one and you want to make it you know 12 by one you can put as many as you want in here but keep in mind that this is a single map and you're not going to be loading and unloading things in, in world composition and there's other ways of making your maps actually more optimized I like 2x2 two two as a starting point and you can create this and then um, you can create another one and then another one and keep linking them together and you know there, we won't get into the, to that part of it but think about your overall map size and for getting started with I think that's going to be good but let's look at another option here as well and all you have to do is, is hit that if you hit fill world it's going to fill the entire world with with those and it's 32 components by 32 and if you imagine 32 times 64 you're getting to be a pretty damn big world so I just want to change that back down to and overall resolution yeah we're not going to mess with that we're going to go 2 by 2 and even at 127 if we leave it there's now 127 individual tiles so if we hit create and go back to here and I always lower this down to zero I don't know why they insist on always making it at 100 but I want it that way you've increased your components here so now if you go in here to play these 100 by 100 tiles are they going to be the correct size a cube if you drop it in scaled one by one and yes they are it's going to be 100 by 100 for a default cube um, same thing for um, a geometry when you place a geometry into your, your world it's going to be 200 by 200 by 200 so that's what you have to remember is each of these big squares here is 100 by 100 and each of the smaller ones inside are 10 by 10 so let's look at the next method for creating our, our terrain so I'm going to grab these two again and delete them and that's height maps and what a height map is and let me actually find one here I have several for example I've got the New York area I've got Moab I've got the LA Basin and let's look at the LA Basin now you can't really see much there so let's find one that actually has a little more detail to it Moab there we go so what a height map is it's a black and white grayscale essentially and if you look at it the darker areas here are going to be your lower areas and the lighter it is the higher it is so the resolution of this will affect how good your 
your map is. You can see as you scroll in how it's going to be pixelated and you can see little squares. You're going to see those squares in your map. Easy way to fix it. But if I take these height maps and whenever I do it by the terrain party method, which I've shown in other videos, um, I've got various different options to work with here. And I mean, if I look at 4K, so let's actually use this one this time, that 4K, and it's actually 4096 by 4096, whereas this one's 1081 by 1081. If I choose this 4K option, let's go in here to our terrain and check right here, import from file. And now I want to come in here and I want to find the actual location of where my terrain is. So I'll scroll down here to my terrains folder. Alright, here and we are in the Moab terrain and let's grab 4K, select open. As you can see, overall resolution is set here. How many tiles? It's 17 by 17. Let's actually I'm going to create it this way and then we'll take a look at it and then I'll try a different method. I'll change this resolution or I might change this but we've already got it. As you can see it's a wireframe in here in our map so if we hit import we haven't applied a material to it yet. Terrain materials is a whole different ball game. So it's importing. It's going to take a while because it's a 4K and remember, as I said, you, you're going to have, well, this is a freaking huge map. It's a great start. It looks kind of Minecrafty, but let's go back over here and increase our camera speed. Let's max it out to 8. So, as you can see, we have some stepping issues, and that's to do with the resolution and, and the, the settings that we chose here. But... Um, it's pretty damn slick. Now, if we come in here, let's again. I'm going to drop into placement mode. I'm going to go back to my world settings. I'm already set up in that mode. So when I hit play, now you get an idea. These each individual step here is actually 100 tall. You can see it's stretching the materials, and yeah, it's going to need some touch-up work not a big deal doesn't take very long to do it especially if you get your your speed turned up but this is a freaking huge map so if you want to dress this up a little bit because you notice that um look how these have turned diamond shape instead of square if you go back into your your landscape and you change your landscape tool to smooth and we can keep a relatively big brush size here and hit that smoothing tool on there you can see what it does is it tries to smooth out the terrain and does a good job at it and it tries to repair things back to normal standard for your your actual terrain so I'm going to go as big as I can on my brush so I smooth it out and it's going to fix the materials it's going to smooth out the overall terrain. We might lose a little bit of our overall detail, but on the map size this big, you know, not that bad of a thing. But if you're wanting to generate rapid terrains, this is the fastest way to go, is importing a height map. And I've got other videos on how you can actually import these height maps really quickly. I mean, we're talking about you pick the location where you want on the map, you scale it and you could be walking on it in less than five minutes time so coming in here you can just do your smoothing smooth out the overall um, map itself it's going to smooth out the not just the tiles but it also smooths out the um, materials so again you really can't complain about this method it's fast it's brutal it gets the job done and once you do your smoothing to it, it actually looks pretty good. Now I'm going to sit here and spend a lot of time because I'm going to get ready to delete this whole terrain. But I just want to show you what it looks like when you, you actually get in here and do your smoothing. 
So you can actually see pre and post smoothing. So this would be a good area right here to, to show off. Let's smooth this area here. And then we'll look at um, pre and post smoothing. It'll be quite um, obvious. So let's come over here and play. So we have no player start. It's just going to play from right above. Yes, yes. Can't edit landscape in Pi. But you can see it's nice and smooth now. And you can do more contouring and, and so forth with that. That's no problem. We actually have a shift key to sprint. So we can just sprint. So you can see where I have smoothed and where I have not smoothed out. Even off in a distance there, you can see how that looks versus over here. And it doesn't take very long if you want to go through and, and, and do it and keep this map the way it is. One thing you will notice by doing this method, for some reason, almost always, the edge of the map is going to have this weird stretching at the end. I am no expert when it comes to doing these, but... You know, if you just want to create a quick map, this is the fastest way to go. So I'm actually going to go back into placement mode. I'm going to grab my landscape and my gizmo, delete that, and let's try loading in a different way here. If you want to know where your original start was, just click on your player start over here, hit F, and it'll zoom in. So let's go back in here. We'll hit this, and we will load this same terrain. But let's actually change it to 6x6. Six six. And you see it changed the, um, the resolution here as well. So when I hit import, it's essentially the same area, but you're not getting the whole thing. Since it was 17x17, 17 17, we're only using 6x6 six six of it or, or whatever we chose. So yeah, it was 6x6, six six. so we're not getting the whole map, we've kind of zoomed in on the resolution of it. Um, and again, if you don't want it, you can just grab those two items, go back into your placement mode, grab them, and you could delete them, and try again. So the original was 17x17, 17 17, so let's try 16x16, 16 16. and we're still, we're back at our 4081. The original image was 4096. What if we did 4096? Well, it tapers it down to 4081. The original was 17 by 17. So now we hit enter. Takes a little while, but again, it's the same thing, and we have the same steps here. So let's actually go back to our images that we actually are pulling from. So let's look at that one and go back in here. We did the 4K version. Um, let's actually look at a smaller resolution. And I'm looking at the original images here. 1081, 1081. This one has kind of a blurred look to it. It's supposed to be the same thing, but it looks blurred. Um, it may not be worth using. Um, this one right here that I've got selected is Still 1,081 by 1,081. It's a PNG image. Um, let's try the merged. This one right here. And you can see it's five components by five components. Now if we import that one, and it's much lower resolution, what's happened here is it's, wow much more drastic on our, our terrain. It's the same terrain, it just got scrunched down and it just looks terrible. So, using the higher resolution image, in this case our 4K image, um, is going to be a better option. And we we'll go back to that one, our 4K. Now, out of all these images that I've got in here, this is the only one that's 4K. So if I open that one, it's going to give us our best overall option. Um, you get section size is 255 by 255. That's fine. Um, sections per component is one 
number of components. Again, I'm going to round this one down to 16 and 16. That's going to cut off the outside edges and get rid of that weird look sections. It's telling us that it's going to be 256 components. Um, it's a additive layer and yeah, everything looks good. I'm going to change here the Z height to zero so I don't have to go back in there and do it again later. So I import it and come on, you can do it. There we go. There's our terrain. We clipped off that ugliness on the outside. This is a freaking huge map. Now there's other things you can do with that image. You can load that image in and size it to instead of 4K, you can 2K or 1080p or you can do whatever you want with that image but 4k is going to be 4000 by 4000 roughly so 4096 by 4096 it's not 4k like you would think of for a monitor or 1080 for 1080p which is um, 1080 by or 1920 by 1080 it's going to be 1081 by 1081 Again, on your sculpting, you can just come back over here to your smoothing tool, make that brush as big as you can, and you can go ahead and smooth out your entire map. Now, there's other things you can do while you're in here in your map. So, okay, I love this terrain. I want to use this terrain. It's awesome. But there's some areas where you just, well, maybe there should be like um, a trail that leads up to that area. And how could I make a ramp section to go up there? And you know what? those are really easy things you know take your time if you're gonna do a map size this big I wouldn't um, I would break this up into individual smaller maps and use level streaming and maybe world composition to break up the map those are things for another day for the videos so yeah, say you're done with all your smoothing and you're happy with the way the terrain looks and it's wonderful. Now there's other tools you have over here, like your smoothing tool is naturally just that. It's going to smooth. You use that. It's not just smoothing again. It's not just smoothing the um, the terrain. But if you look in the materials where these steps are, they're diamond shape and by doing your smoothing, it fixes the, the way the material lays into that area. So you can smooth it out and make it look nice. We don't have any materials on here yet and creating a, a terrain material is really pretty simple. Once you learn how to do it, it's not bad. And then you can come back in here and actually use a paint tool and paint on your terrain to have, okay, this is going to be a rocky area, this is going to be sandy, this is going to be dirt, this is going to be grass. You can lay out all those different areas and define them that way um, there's um, and I've never used it before but it's a dynamic terrain material where it changes based on elevation levels and things like that but let's look at some of the other tools we see the smoothing we see how it works um, sculpt your sculpting tool is let's come over here I don't care about this terrain I'm not going to keep it but with it default where you left click you're going to raise that area but if you hold down the shift key and left click in the same area it's gonna lower so if you want to divot that area out you can shift left click you get your tool strength you can turn it up and down you know if you turn it up it's gonna be more drastic if you turn it down well you want it to be up some Yeah. So be careful with your tool strength. Think about what you're going to do with it and how drastic you want your effect to be. And if you're going through here and like, oh, this looks like crap. I hate it. I've ruined it. Well, there's two fixes for it. You can run your smoothing tool over it and kind of lower the contour back down to be less drastic. Or you can come in here and grab your flatten tool. And I would, I love using this one let's lower the size of my tool here and you pick an elevation that you like like say right here 
and then as long as you're holding down the mouse button you're going to flatten that area underneath your brush to the height that you selected so you can sit here and just go back over that and you can see it's chipping away at it and lowering it back down to the elevation that I chose so if you want to create a flat section inside there well, let's go ahead and bring my brush size back up again make it more drastic and let's get rid of all this ugliness that we created but we've created a big flat area so you would want to come back in here and maybe do some contouring or if that's what you wanted was you wanted to create a flat area so that um, you can put a town here or whatever you want um, your sculpt tools are great for laying out ditches and doing your contouring and stuff like that well the next one is kinda cool it's actually the ramp tool so you've got this drastic elevation here and you want your you want a ramp a smooth transition between there and there so if you click we'll say there and there you see it just drew that right there now you can set your width right here as well mine set to 2000 you can set it as, as much as you want you can reset it but if you hit add ramp there you go it just created a ramp so what I like doing is actually if I'm going to create something like that I'll go from here to you know, let's um, reset let's go from like here to here add the ramp and then maybe to here no nope, reset I'm going to go from here to here add ramp reset and then go from here to here reset and then you can make a zigzag road that you can use to get to whatever elevation you want to so you can get your own little zigzag ramp and then come back in with your other tools your sculpting and your smoothing and stuff like that but if you come over here you see you kind of got a little of a contour detail let's play from here you could smooth this out you know but now you've created this ramp section where you go from the lower level to there to here and then zigzag back and forth and that's all the ramp right over there so the ramp tool is a lot of fun to play with um, let's see what else we got here the erosion tool you can apply the erosion tool and it uses a um, type of erosion to kind of roughly recontour an area so we're reclaiming our ramp section back into the world um, various different um, amounts of noise you can apply to it um, it simulates sun erosion you've got hydro erosion you can use on here which can help to make your over smoothened terrain a little bit more detailed so if you over smooth an area and you want to add some detail to it this is a good way to come back in and apply some detail to it my tool strength is kind of weak right now let's raise that up the higher your tool strength the more you're going to actually get out of it it adds like water erosion to it so it actually makes it look more natural and you got noise that's noise you you really would probably tone it down just a little bit uh, I'm gonna actually gonna go back in here my smoothing tool and knock that back down so you know you've got a bunch of different tools at your disposal um, play around with it you know there's a bunch of different things you can do in here that you know this one right here Rito the blah, 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 whatever the hell it says is what you're gonna do to help fix areas like this where the materials are stretched it'll try to reposition things and it looks like it's locking up but it's it's actually trying to re 
do the terrain so that it um, can actually um, do that. Hit the mirror image. But yeah, take some time, experiment, play around with it, build your terrain the way you want. Each way has its own pros and cons. And just because you've used this method right here, see this is a huge terrain. So every time you do some editing on it, it's going to take a little while. And let's kind of zoom out and look in. This is a big friggin' map. Trade materials. Um, creating those. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to do a very, very modest new terrain. And we're going to do 2 by 2 and create. Very modest little terrain. And I'm going to go back to this and select my terrain. Make sure this is on zero. So I've hit play. Now I'm sitting on it. So modest terrain to start off with. And from there, you could do your sculpting if you want to on this. But you can also combine it with the geometry effects. And I said with the, um, the BSP geometries, Mm, let's get my camera back, speed back down again. Bring it back down to four. You can do a lot with setting up your BSP geometries to, to give you your terrain effects. Um, again, you can sit there and manipulate these in so many different ways. But try to use this as much as possible. So if you do 1,000 by 1,000 by 1,000 and set this to 500 you got this one big ass cube but remember you always have this mode right here geometry editing and you can actually grab on a face click extrude and add another section to it Do the same thing over here extrude this one out and what if you wanted to extrude this one out grab this face extrude it And you can start rough forming out some terrain. And our player start is in the way. So I'll go back here on my box brush. And then I can grab, say, this one right here and manipulate that corner and grab this one. And there's so many different things you can do with the, um, the box brush and geometry editing and so forth. You can create terrain objects this way. And use them as part of your map. All right. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time creating this. I'm just kind of giving you an example of what you can do. You can, oh, I don't want to click on the line. I want to click on there. Clicking on a line, like this one right here. Oh, I just clicked on a face. This is a face. Um, you got your your points. There's a line right here that I just clicked on. That um, if I manipulate that line, everything that's attached there forth will actually be manipulated. Grab that point, and I can lower it down. You can grab and left click or control left click on two points at the same time. Well, I didn't mean a freaking line. But when you click on two points, you can do them individually and, you know, experiment with this. And again, the pros and cons of adding your own train, train sections in this way is you can add in things like, uh, let's lower this down get it to where we can actually walk onto it. If you're wanting to add tunnels into your, your map, then I would start off with it this way. Adding in a shaped by you section of rock or whatever onto the, uh, the, the map itself. You know, this, this looks absolutely terrible. When you look at it, it yeah, looks absolutely horrible. But now you can actually take this and um, 
I'm going to go back to this mode, grab another geometry. I'm going to grab a cylinder. I'm going to make it hollow. I'm going to make the inside diameter 200. The Z height, let's make it 2000. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. Let's shove it into our mountain. And notice it's not perfect because, well, when it goes into that portion of the mountain, it's actually going to carve it out. But if we do subtractive and now lower it down, So what you'd want to do here is actually try to size it up to where it's not too long. Um, let's try 1,000. Well, we can shorten it up even more. But you can use this as a method for creating tunnels. So now whenever you go into play your map, uh, I need to move it a little bit more. Now we have a nice little tunnel that goes all the way through. Go to play, turn around. Hey, look, we've got a tunnel going through our mountain. Yay, and I pierced the ground. That's why I fell through. Grab my cylinder brush one more time. Raise it up. And I guess I need to make it a little bit longer again. Do you get the idea on that as well? So it comes in handy to be able to do a little bit of both. Regular terrain and BSP geometry so you can add in things like your tunnels. Now I can walk through this big gigantic rock and falling through the world because I've got a hole there. that should fix that. So we can see the hole there, we can walk around our, our terrain, but if this was built onto the side of a mountain and we wanted to have that as a, um, a place for a tunnel to go through, there we go, we have a tunnel or a cave or whatever you want to do. So there's all kind of different tricks and tips you can do on maps. I hope some of this was actually useful for you. Um, I am actually going to build this map and I'm going to save this terrain of 2x2 two two, and I'm going to put some stuff on there and we can start utilizing it. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on camera building maps because well some people like it, some people find it boring. Um, I don't know, you guys haven't said either way but that's multiple different ways you can create maps and how you can manipulate them and things like that. So I can come in here and I can make this terrain actually have some contours and stuff and think about areas where you might want to have like a cave or a tunnel and you're going to have to notch it out and you're going to have to build your own little um, meshes to go around that as well. And you could use the BSP geometries. Just remember that when you're stretching them, you have to be careful of your materials. And the bigger your map, the longer it takes to build lighting. There's nothing in here but flat ground, and that's it. guess I can show the basics of doing a um, terrain material. So it just finished doing its build. There we go. Come on. You can do it. Thank you. Go away now. So we'll do like we did before, create our basic folder, map, stuff. These are all map default items. I'm just going to grab them, throw them in that folder, and let's quickly go through make a terrain material so we don't have this ugly, flat, nothing terrain. I like it for building the, the basics of the map because I know that these things are 100 by 100 squares, but okay. Go over here, materials. 
I'm going to go ahead and create a landscape material. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to um, materials and textures. I'm just going to create a material. Okay, we're going to call this our land, or learn how to spell landscape, but I want to put an M underscore in front of it so I know that it's a material. I'm going to go in there and there's nothing in it. We have just this. Okay, so for now I'm going to leave it anchored up here, but I'm going to go ahead and find the materials that I want to use for my landscape material. And since we're using starter content, we're going to come in here and look at the textures. And you'll notice we've got um, a texture and then we have the normal to go along with it. So let's look for first off grass. I always use grass as my first texture. So I'm going to grab grass and this right here. You can actually take my landscape material, drag it down to here. Now that I've got these two selected, I can just do this and drag that in there. Now I've got those two samples into my thing. I'm going to keep them lumped on top of each other so I know that those are the ones that go with each other. So we got that. We can do this one and this one. This can be our dirt layer. Okay, and then we can do another one. Let's add a third layer in. This metal rust actually does pretty good for doing mud. But let's add this right here. So we have a stone or a pebble layer. That's good enough. We'll just do three. So I'm going to drag this back up here now. And you can see we've got three pairs. And I do want to split them out. But we know that we have our, our regular and our normal. Regular, normal. And I'm going to rearrange them here in just a second. But I just want to make sure that I've got them separated. And here we go. Because what I'm going to do here is I want them uh, damn your OCD of trying to be neat and organized. You waste so much time doing all this crap, you numbskull. Alright, so we can take these three, select them, and I'm going to move them down and I'm going to grab these three, move them on top. This is a very simple, simple way of creating your landscape material. I'm not going to get too in-depth in doing the, the fancy stuff. But there we go. So now we can take this and we need a way of combining these together to make this as our landscape material. So I'm going to drag off from my base color and I'm going to do a landscape layer blend. Okay, so this is empty. This has no pins to it. And I know that I've got three layers, grass, dirt, and pebbles. So I'm going to hit the plus, one, two, and three. And then you can actually open it up. And layer name is going to be grass. The other one here is going to be, for the layer name, dirt. And the final one, we're going to call this Pebbles. Alright, so now that we've got this, we can actually take that one, Control C and Control V, and paste another version of it. And we're actually going to link that one to our normal. So now we can grab our grass, attach it to grass, dirt attach it to dirt and our pebbles attach it to pebbles. Do the same thing for our normal since we put them in the correct order and the normal here is going to actually give us our 3D look to our material. So that's it. I'm just going to go ahead and hit save and our landscape material is for the most part done but it looks black. Don't worry it gets better. So, now I'm going to come back over here to my materials list. And now, let's look at our landscape. It's this vast 2x2 two two area. 
with no material on it. So I'm going to scroll down here, landscape material. I'm going to select my landscape material here and hit the arrow and guess what's going to happen? It's going to compile shaders. Yay! And our terrain's going to be beautiful, right? Because we just gave it a terrain material or landscape material. See, it's perfect. At this point, you're like, holy shit, I just ruined it. It's all black. I can't do anything with it. Relax. Go to landscape. Go to paint. And there we go. Our grass, dirt, and pebbles. So now I want to click on layer info, create layer info. And I want to create a weight blended layer. And I'm going to select my assets and materials and there we go by doing the grass one first it's going to first off we're going to get rid of this down to a normal size um, it populates the entire world with grass I want to do the same thing and there and there so that's our dirt layer and the same thing for our pebble layer So now we have our layer info and let's go ahead and save all and this is where it gets really freaking redundant. Build your lighting so that you can get ready to, to paint so that you can rebuild your lighting again. So with your brush size, I'm going to bring this brush size down to, oh let's just click on it make it 500 brush strength is another thing here um, your brush strength is going to affect some things as well as your fall off you should experiment with it and see what each of them do and it's going to be the amount of how sharp or how fuzzy the edges are of how and where you're painting on your terrain so we're already on our grass so we know our terrain is covered in grass that's no big deal that's lovely. We already know we have grass. But we want maybe an area right here that has a look of pebbles and then maybe a little splotchy dirt there as well. Um, you can add as many layers as you want to that layer blend and have different colors of dirt, different colors of sand, different types of pebbles, different types of whatever. Um, there are things you can do to adjust the layer uh, like the pebbles. It may not come out just right so you may actually have to, yes, thank you, um, readjust your, your pebbles layer. So I'm going to select my pebbles, and I'm going to paint on here, and you see, uh-oh, I just lost everything. Don't worry. There we go. So now I've just painted this area of pebbles around here just by using my paintbrush. So wherever you paint on here, you can paint your terrain just however you want. And let's grab some dirt. Yay! Oh no, it went all shitty again. That's the sucky part of doing this, is you have to wait for it then to recompile shaders, especially if you're doing it over multiples. So you can see the this is kind of harsh and drastic. You can see the, the fall off, the inner circle and the outer circle is the amount of strength and if I lower my tool strength down a little bit and increase the fall off and let's go back to my pebbles one more time you can see there's some light blending to it you can adjust that tool to blend the layers together so that um, as you're doing this you can actually see one through the other so you can see the edges, you can see the dirt is covering the rocks a little bit, and that's absolutely awesomeness. So if you want to paint a riverbed with, you know, have some pebbles and have some dirt and then kind of blend them together and then you do like another dirt layer right before you go to your grass layer and yeah. Take your time in setting up your brushes and that's that. Alright, that's your map lesson for the day. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit save all, and we are done with map talk for right now. 
I'll do another video here shortly and we'll pick up from here. Um, there's a lot more stuff you can do whenever it comes to um, painting your terrain. There's also foliage. You can create a foliage brush and paint on trees and grass and things like that. Um, yeah, I suck at it. So, you know, I could teach you how to do it, but then I, you're going to have the blind leading the blind at that point. Um, so, thank you for watching. Stay tuned. We'll pick up and we'll do some more in either of the basic training series or on the FPS series. Either one. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you do hit subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Check in with my Discord channel. See what's going on there. And uh, keep up with what's going on with the different projects and stuff. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later.